Hi, I'm Christian Brindle, and welcome to the Everything Medicare Podcast. What's up, everything, Medicare, Podcast Nation, this is Christian Brindle, wherever you are, and however you might be listening to me today, thank you so much for taking the time, this is episode 195 of the Everything Medicare Podcast. Every single week, I bring you three podcast episodes where we dis- we discuss your Medicare, your Medicaid, your Social Security and everything that has to do with that golden age called retirement. If you're unfamiliar with my work, and if this is your first time tuning in, I own an agency just located outside of Salt Lake City, Utah, called Christian Brindle Insurance Services. We specialize in Medicare health plans. We work with people in 10 different states. I've published three books on the topic of insurance, two specifically about Medicare. And folks, I made this podcast in mid-2018 with the goal in mind to basically take the confusion out of Medicare. In a world where Medicare information is scarce to say the least, I had a vision in mind that we could basically put out content in a form and fashion that's easily digestible, where there's an episode about everything you could possibly want to know about And people could just get questions answered in an easy, digestible, short-term fashion content way. And I think we've done that. I think we've done that on a pretty grand scale. Fast forward, we're now in May of 2020 as I talk to you. We have a very big audience. Um, We're number one, if not number two, on all of the major podcast platforms as far as popularity is concerned on Medicare-based shows. And we're closing in on 200 episodes. This is episode 195. I just wanted to take a minute and talk about this because this is so exciting for me because I remember recording the very first episode. We didn't have the equipment we have now. We didn't have anything we had now. I didn't really know what I was doing. We were kind of, you know, just kind of winging it, if you will. Fast forward to now... You know, I never imagined we would eclipse 200 episodes. And it's so exciting for me personally because I feel like we've made a really, really big difference in a lot of people's lives and provided a lot of really good information and kind of exposed some things in the industry to kind of paint things in a certain light that they need to be painted in. So very, very exciting. Um, And... I appreciate every single one of you that stuck with us from the beginning, whether you started listening six months ago, whether you started listening last year, or maybe you've been listening ever since we um, launched our first show in 2018. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thanks Thanks for your support. Now let's get into the topic at hand. Everything in the media is dominated right now by panic. Pandemics, COVID-19, hornets, giant Asian hornets, right? Murder hornets in Washington. I mean, this is basically what you're going to see if you turn on the news right now. But in less than five months, we're scheduled to have a presidential election. And it will not be long until that seizes our attention if it hasn't already. It's narrowed down to two presidential candidates. I don't like discussing politics on this show, and I'm not planning to do so on this episode today. Because there's people on both ends of the spectrum that listen to to this show. And I'm not trying to alienate anybody. I'm not trying to isolate anybody. And point blank, I don't think I've ever made my political ideologies present and known on this show. But sometimes, and I've said it before and I'll say it again, sometimes... When you're dealing with government-funded insurance, politics plays a role because politics is going to determine what end of the pendulum something may swing. 
one thing I have made clear is I was never a proponent for a Medicare for All system. I was incredibly critical of that, and I will continue to be. And I've done several episodes about it in the past. Not planning on getting into that today. Right now, we have two presidential candidates. It's going to be one of these two guys. Right? I mean, that's something we can all agree on. I stumbled across an article the other day that I th found fairly interesting that I thought would be, you know, um, appropriate to bring to the forefront and have a conversation about this. I did an episode last week about the potential of lowering the Medicare age to 55 and how there's been whispers about that. Well, now we have a presidential candidate possibly throwing out the suggestion of not lowering the age to 55, but lowering it to 60. SeriousHealth.org put out an article um, written by Julie Rovner. Shout out to Julie Rovner, whoever that is. And it came out on April 11th of this year. It's titled, Biden's health play in, the, in a, in a COVID-19 economy would be to lower Medicare's eligibility age to 60. In one of his first pr proposals since becoming a presumpt presumptive Democratic presidential nominee, Joe Biden is waving back into the roiling waters of health policy. In a nod to the efforts of COVID-19 in the economy and in what is clearly an overtune of supporters of the Medicare for All plan pushed by Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders, Biden wants to lower the age of Medicare eligibility from 65 to 60. It reflects the reality that even after the current crisis ends, older Americans are likely to find it difficult to secure jobs, the former vice president wrote this week in a post on a website. Details on the plan are few, but Biden made clear that Americans aged 60 to 64 who have employer health coverage could keep it if they wanted to, or they could join Medicare. Biden writes, quote unquote, under this concept, Americans would have access if they choose to have Medicare when they turn 60 instead of when they turn 65. Medicare benefits would be provided to them as they are a, to current Medicare recipients. This would make Medicare available to a set of Americans who work hard and retire before they turn 65 or would prefer to leave their employer plans to the public option or other plans they access through the Affordable Care Act before they retire. In addition, he says, the Biden Medicare-like public option as well as the subsidized private plans available to individuals through the ACA Affordable Care Act would still remain available. So basically... He's considering lowering the Medicare age to 60 if he was elected president. Now, one thing I found telling from that article that I did actually kind of agree with is I think it's a play to try to win over some of those Bernie Sanders supporters that want Medicare for all. I think more than anything, it's an attempt to do that and meet them halfway. Maybe not even meet them halfway, but meet them some of the way. You know, hey, listen, I'm not going to do Medicare for all, but... Maybe we can do this, and it's, you know, kind of a compromise. I have a lot that I want to say about this. Um, I have to take a break here from this week's sponsor. Wait for me to come back in segment two, and I'll give you my full reaction and my personal opinion on this topic. Don't go anywhere! Welcome back, everybody! This is episode 195 of the Everything Medicare podcast. I'm Christian Brindle. Thanks for being here with me today, and thanks for sticking with me through that break. I have been digging the McDonald's iced coffee lately. Oh my goodness gracious. I don't usually eat at McDonald's, but this iced coffee is just killing me. I mean, I've been getting it every day for the last couple of weeks now. Oh, it's fantastic. Let's talk about 
if this is reality, lowering the Medicare age, or is it just a farce? So here's my opinion. If you listen to my episode about the potential possibility of lowering the Medicare age to 55, you probably have an idea what I'm going to say. Look at the facts. Medicare is in the red. That's what we know. Medicare is in the red. So at the age of 65, and people bringing um, you know, themselves onto the Medicare program, people paying into it, people having access to it at age 65, Medicare is in the red. We know this. This is this is not a, 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 a this is not an opinion. This is a fact. Medicare is in the red. It's in the negatives as is. Now, with the government printing trillions of dollars in the form of stimulus relief packages, how do you think our economy is is at the moment? Well, it's not good. Have you looked at your stock market accounts lately? Mine's not doing so well right now. I talked to several clients of ours in the last couple of months since this started, and there's been tons of them, you know, that I've heard that they have, you know, retirement accounts that are down 50 grand, 200 grand, 500 grand. And that's basically their retirement. And printing trillions of dollars in the long scheme of things does more than anything else speed up the rate of inflation. So it what it means is all the money you have, if you have $10,000 in the bank, if you have $50,000 in the bank, if you have $2,000 in the bank, whatever it might be, it just became a lot less valuable very quickly. Because what is inflation if not more of something being made available, which means the existing, you know, the existing um, dollar bills that are floating around just become less valuable. The more of something that exists, the less valuable it is because it's easier to come by. I've used the analogy before of like a, a rare sports car. Let's say there was 100 made ever. It's going to be worth more than a sports car that has a million um, copies floating around or a million models floating around. Anytime there's less of something, there's higher demand. Anytime there's more of something, it's just not so special now, is it? give you an example. Let's say, let's use the terminology of, of a, a book, you know. If there's a book at Barnes & Noble, and it's at every Barnes & Noble in the country, there's not a whole lot of demand for it because it, you can come by it anywhere. But Let's say it's a book that is incredibly rare and it's written by someone famous. There's going to be a lot of demand by that if, if they don't publish it. And there's only a couple copies that were ever copied. You kind of get what I'm saying. Medicare's in the red with the age being 65. If you lower the age at all, it just means that more people are coming on and it's more of a burden on Medicare's shoulders. A burden that they're having trouble holding up now. Right? When the Medicare program first became available, it was not designed or thought with the intention of it to cover as many people as it covers today. It came out in the 1960s, Lyndon B. Johnson. And do you have any idea how many seniors there were that he, was, had, that he had in mind to be covered in comparison to what it would be today? He wasn't looking 60 years in the, in the future. Lyndon B. Johnson did not have 2020 in mind. Not only that, people weren't living as long back in the 1960s. The mortality rate has gone up, my friends. So not only are there more people that are being covered than ever, people are living longer. Not that that's a bad thing. That's a fantastic thing. We should all live the longest we can and live the best life we can. But from a financial perspective in the Medicare world, 
It's harder for them to keep up with these costs. Not to mention all the people on Medicare disability. It's tough, folks. And all that it would do, unless they have some kind of plan, which I don't see where that would come from, our nation is in debt, a lot of debt. But unless they have some kind of plan, the economics don't make sense. Lowering the age to 60 would increase the, the burden on Medicare's shoulders more than you think. Now, selfishly, would I like it to happen? Well, from a business perspective, it's great for me. I have access to more clients, more customers. So I got to be transparent about that. But my intention and my agenda is for Medicare to be around in 20 years. I don't want them to push it too far and it implode. And then Christian's out of a job. And this podcast is over. I want longevity. And I'm just not so convinced that this move would be an act of longevity. Don't go anywhere, folks. I have to take one more break. Be back with you with some final thoughts in our third and final segment. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, everybody. Thanks so much for sticking with me all the way to the end. This is a tough conversation for me to have because there's two angles that I'm looking at this from. Am I looking at it from um, a doable a doable point where this is actually a realistic thing that can be done long term? Because think about this, too. In 20 years from now, in 2040... There's going to be a substantial amount more people that are going to be turning Medicare eligible age than there are today. This problem is going to keep getting bigger. Not to say that's really a problem, but the longer we go as a race, unless you know some something dramatically wipes out a huge portion of our population. If you watch the Avengers movie, unless Thanos shows up and wipes out half our population, our population is going to grow. When our population grows, it means there's more of everything, more children running around, more people needing to buy houses, more people on Medicare. And so if they lower the age to 60, I'm not sure of the long-term reliability and realistic um, reality of it being able to stick around. I, I, I would be concerned about the entire program collapsing. And I don't think anybody wants that. I certainly don't. Because remember what the healthcare system was like for seniors before Medicare, the 1950s. It was it was putrid, pathetic. Talked about it on this show before. Do some research on it. It was horrific. The Medicare system is the best system we've been able to come up with for seniors ever in this country. And that's not a dramatic thing for me to say. That's a fact. We should be interested in what's going to be sustainable over a long period of time. So even though for me at this very moment right now, it'd be good for business, I'm looking at what will help the program stay strong and available 20 years from now. Anyway, folks, um, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I um, hope you got something out of it, and I hope you understand where I'm coming from with this. This isn't a political thing to me. This is having a conversation about it, whether you're Democrat, Republican, somewhere in between. That's what we're looking at. As always, folks, um, thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you so much for tuning in. And until next time, we'll be back with you with another episode on Wednesday. Take care.